Hi, I'm Cindy with the Port Huron Recreation Department. Today I'm going to make a beaded spider and a spider web uh, out of watercolor um, and some stuff from around the house. All right, let's get started. I'm going to start with the spider and he's going to look kind of like this. Um, I took a couple uh, pipe cleaners. These are 12 inch long and I had a 6 inch one. I cut that in half so now this is 3 inch. This will be for his little pinchers. So I'm going to cut these guys in half with my wire cutters. And if you have something to measure with, the, with them with, you can cut them exactly in half. If not, then you can also eyeball it. I have a cutting mat here that's in my art room. So I just cut those guys in half. And they're not exactly uh, even but that's okay it won't matter spider legs aren't all even anyways usually the front ones are longer maybe even the back ones hmm have to look that one up all right so I'm gonna make a little loop bend in the pinchers and I'm going to put them over top of this kind of looks like cat whiskers bend these over These will cross a little bit, but that's okay. So it kind of looks like that. I'm going to take and twist. Looks like this. Then I'm going to twist these. Everything's twisted now. And just spread out the legs. I tried to get the longer ones in front. So he kind of looks like a spider already. Just like that. Then I started adding beads. And you just start with one going around. I do one side at a time. So that's his first little joint where it comes right out of his body. Then I'm doing purple. I kind of just pulled out the colors I wanted to use ahead of time so it'd be easier just to grab them. And so I did one, two, one, and two, and one. I'm going to bend this little guy up here at the end, kind of like his foot, and then I'm going to take my fingers from the back of it and I'm going to push up a little push up from the body and it kind of looks like his leg is bent so I did that on these guys and then if one leg's a little shorter you curl it up and around the last bead that way uh, it'll the beads will stay on So again, I just did them all at once over here. It was a little easier. One, two. You can do this with whatever colors you want. You can design it whichever way you want. You can make the legs even longer. Use the whole 12 inches like stuff that I like I, I had it originally and then I cut it off got that leg there's a lot of legs on these guys Oh, 
banget dari tempat tempat mau kayak ada degree ini I'm gonna just bend my feet up here since I've got them going already and do the rest of the legs so it's easier if they don't come off you can do it in whatever order you want see how that one's getting shorter already pull the beads up they'll scrunch into the body a little more and see yeah it's pretty tight curl this guy up a little uh, over the edge of that guy and over the bead there so I'll bend his leg up I think I lost one there we go okay do this guy up bend the foot then bend the knee that looks like a knee and then I already bent these guys up so I can just I'm holding the body and pushing up underneath the knee part so it's all kind of just staying. See how it's all bent like a spider looks? And the last guy. And then these, these pinchers, you can either leave them long or you can cut them off and make them smaller. But normally they're bent in like that. So there's the spider. And here's what we started with. Okay. I'll set that aside. And the next thing I did is I started a, uh, a spider web. And this one I had glue and salt. So, to do that, start with a, a blank piece of paper. I use black. You might get away with white too because I think the color would show pretty well on there too. I had this tray in my kitchen so I decided to use it just to keep everything a little neater because when you start putting salt on here it gets everywhere so you've got the squeeze bottle of your glue you got Elmer's glue and just start kind of drawing with the tip of the glue so just kind of make a diagonal it doesn't have to go all the way to the other exact diagonal I put it off to the side a little do another one and if it starts getting clumpy up here, you can wait, pull it out a little bit, and then start squeezing. And then spider webs go like this. A little fancy U shape pattern here. You could leave this open, or you could go all the way to the edge if you want for a spider web. I noticed that they kind of get bigger as they go out further. So that's how I got that all set up. And then I just took my salt. It had some clumps in it, but it shouldn't matter. And you just shake it all over. Put it down pretty thick. Try to hit the lines really good. Don't want to move it around too much, but you can kind of slide it around a little so that the, the salt hits the glue. Make sure it's on there pretty good. And then just set it aside to dry. And then once you're done with that drying, it does look like this. And so the salt kind of expands a little bit in the glue, but it stays pretty well. Then you just take your brush, any kind of brush. I kind of have a big 
uh, tip to it because um, I thought it'd just be a little easier to keep it wet. Um, if you put more water inside of the bristles, it'll pick up the paint a little better because when you set it down and if it's dry, it won't really spread so good. So like if I add a little bit of water and make it really, really goopy in here, see how it kind of looks watery. You want that. It's almost like a drip that you want. And then you just put it down there and you can see it start to expand. Kind of did it all over the place. There's going to be salt in your brush. Wipe it off so it doesn't stay in your palette. Pick up some more paint. Stick with yellow for a little bit. And I'm getting it in there. When you're all done, you can go ahead and clean up your palette. And how you do that is you just take a little paper towel while it's still wet and wipe it and it pulls out those little clumps. This is kind of an old palette. I like using it though because it you just get it wet and you can keep on using it. Dry orange. Wipe that off. I'll be a little more careful this time with the salt in my palette. See it's extending out there. I have a dog knocking at the door <laughs> and my neighbor's mowing his lawn out there. Hopefully you guys can hear me pretty well. Let's see if that turns into orange. Oh, it does. See that? So yellow and red make orange. I bet you guys were guessing. Okay. Put a little red up there. I think we need another color. Wipe that off. Get it wet. And we're going in for purple. I think purple is a fall color. I have some purple mums outside that I really like. See that moving? It's pretty cool. And you just cover up all the white now. It's all merged together. The purple and the yellow are gonna make a different color. What's it look like? Um, usually they make brown. Or the purple and the orange would make some brown too. I don't know if this will do it. Okay little bit more. I like when the purple mixes with the red because it gets kind of a burgundy color. Let's see what happens here with this yellow. Oh, it's not bad. 
All right, I want to make these a little darker. Or we'll say brighter. So I'm going to use the yellow again. Let's see if that goes a little further with it. Makes it more colorful. Okay, I'm pretty happy with that. That's pretty cute. I'd like to see your pictures when you guys get all finished with yours and your spiders. I would love to see it. If you change it up a little too, I'm interested to see what becomes of that. Here's what my salt and my glue is looking like right now on the black. And there's the spider web. I'll put that guy aside to dry. And then I did one more thing. I did the, um, I put the glue on white this time, but I didn't add the salt. I'm going to go freestyle without that pan. All right. This one, I'm just going to add color to it. And then you guys can see how it resists it. I usually start with the lighter color. And this is going to be called Wet on Wet. If you remember the summer programs that we did, we learned a lot about watercoloring. Remember, we got to tap off and then pick up some water. Grab a lighter or a darker color, going to a darker color. Keep doing it backwards. <laughs> All right, and then we got some of the red blending in here. All right, I'm going for green now. I'm gonna try this green. I like to make the green, like the uh, lime color green. Can you see how it's kind of resisting right in there? That's that glue showing through. It looks a little white. Let's do more yellow. Now what? Uh, a little orange there. Orange is a little underrated right now, isn't it? Wow, okay. Move that around, put a little there. Move this red. Okay, a little more. Oy, a little more red. And I will post this in the comments when it's all dry. You can see what that looks like. See how it gets a little brown when you start mixing things, but that's okay. It's kind of fall colors anyway. So there's that one. I'm going to tap this off a little bit just so it can dry a little bit more where the glue is. 
I'm going right where the glue is, not really necessarily where the paper is only. But I think it looks pretty neat. So we did that. Um, and then I did this earlier. This was on a piece of card stock, like cardboard that was uh, part of a packaging, uh, something, something that I bought. And I just pulled it out because I liked it. Um, I like the size of it and then I kind of played around with that But that resist seems to work pretty good. Maybe this will change up a little bit more. This is a little drier And then This guy's drying And, and we did our spiders There's our spider. So I hope you had fun with this and I really can't wait to see what you all have done. Uh, post them in your comments, like us, uh, let us know if there's other stuff that you'd like to see done. Um, we're gonna have a nice series going on through the winter time, um, December at some point. And I hope you join us again. Thank you.